We have new iPhones, although I don't have the new iPhones yet, so I thought instead let's talk about the Mac. It's been a little while since I did a top tips, top hacks. I hate those phrases, by the way, but you have to use them to be seen on the internet these days. But I do a lot of reviews of Mac. Do? I publish a lot of reviews of Macs and you know, give buying guidance and do all that sort of stuff. But I very rarely show you what's on mine. And I know quite a few of you say, what's on your Mac, Mark? What do you do with it? What, you know, what customization do you carry out? What apps do you use? All that sort of thing. So I thought, let's wrap all of that stuff into one video with 10, and it has to be 10 because this is the internet, 10 things that I do to every Mac, the apps that I use, and just little tricks that I've learned over the course of about 20 years of using these things. Some of them might be useful for you, some of them may not be useful, but there's always one in these lists that I think hits you and you go, oh, why don't I do that? I, I, I still get that when I watch these videos myself, so I thought, let's make my own. So, let's get into it. First thing to note is that I'm doing this on Mac OS 26 Taho, 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 sorry I'm British, but I'm doing it on the public beta of Mac OS 26 because it's September 2025 and it's not fully out yet. However, I want this video to make sense in the future, which is why I'm doing that. Equally, the stuff that I do to my Macs, as you'll see, is very universal. So it goes right back to very early generations of, of the Mac. So don't worry about that. The very first thing that I do to any new Mac is sort out the dock, because when you first set your Mac up, this is what it looks like, roughly, with, with a few different apps in it. It's just huge, it's massive, and it's got things like GarageBand and Pages and Numbers, stuff that no one ever, well, some people use, but you may not use. What I've discovered over the years is that the tidier and smaller the dock is, the easier it is to navigate your Mac. And you have to be brutal with this because it means just keeping the apps that you use every single day in the dock and taking out everything else. So for instance, even on this dock here that I've been using for the last couple of weeks, there's stuff in here I need to get rid of. So for instance, the App Store. I go into that maybe once a month, so it goes. Equally, iPhone mirroring, I don't use it that often these days, get rid of it. The standard Apple Mail client, I do use it occasionally, but not enough to justify its presence in the dock, so go. And if I'm being really brutal, which I have to be, notes. I use notes a lot, but it doesn't need to be there. That leaves me just the apps that I use. Ev oh no, there's another one. Messages, we can get rid of that, have to be brutal. Then I grab the dock here and make it as small as feels comfortable for my eyesight, which for me is about there. If I was being really critical, I could make that even smaller in terms of removing other apps, but it's a lot tidier. And for instance, if I need to go into the App Store, Command, Space, App Store, there it is. Please use Spotlight as much as you can for opening apps. It's a game changer. I've been switching monitors recently for my Mac mini setup. This is the ASUS 6K Pro Art, by the way. Stay tuned for more on that. But one thing I can't get over is either the lack of a webcam in this case, or in the Studio Displays case, a terrible webcam. And that's why I've switched to this, which is the Obspot Meet 2. It's tiny. The built-in webcam on your laptop or your monitor might be fine for quick calls, but the moment you need to look even slightly professional, they let you down. The Obspot Meet 2 is about the size of a matchbox, but it packs a 4K sensor with a bright f1.8 lens, so you get sharp video and better color, even if your lighting is not ideal. And yes, I've been using it in this fairly dimly lit studio for quite a while now, and it's absolutely fantastic. Certainly a lot better than the studio display. But one of the really clever bits is the AI auto framing. This camera doesn't move, but when you shift in your chair, stand up, or have more than one person on the screen, it keeps the framing tidy without you having to adjust anything. And if you need to show something up close, the autofocus is quick and it doesn't do that really annoying blurry to sharp to blurry dance. And audio is covered. This is the built-in mic and it has noise cancelling to cut out background chatter, all that sort of stuff. It's just very handy for ease of use and also means you don't have to carry around an external mic if you travel a lot. Happy days. Plus, all of this is plug and play, so you just plug it into your PC or Mac, download the Obspot Center app, and you're away. And you can control loads of stuff within the app, like the ISO, the white balance, multi-camera setups. It's fantastic. And when you're finished, the magnetic privacy cover snaps on, so there's no awkward, is my camera still on moments. If you're ready to upgrade your built-in webcam, the Meet 2 is definitely worth looking at. Check out the link below, and thanks to Obspot for sponsoring this video. Next up, some system settings which aren't very exciting but I think are very useful. The first one is dock related. Again, if you right click on the dock, go to dock settings and turn on minimize windows into application icon. When you do that and you have an app like Safari open and you minimize it, 
it goes into the Safari app. If you don't have that turned on, and this is the default behavior, when you minimize something, it goes into the dock. And the more things you minimize into the dock, the more the dock gets bigger again and undoes all that work that you did in the previous step. So in my opinion, I think you should always turn that on to keep things nice and tidy. On the desktop, as you can probably guess, I like to keep a very tidy desktop. By default, there's no snapping involved. So what I mean by that is that as you add folders and files to your desktop, they end up in this higgledy-piggledy mess, as you can see here. To avoid that, right-click on the desktop, go to Show View Options, and turn on Snap to Grid. When you do that, if we move these, they very conveniently and tidily go perfectly in place. The other thing I always do with the new Mac is go into Finder, settings and turn on show hard disks because by default again your macintosh hd isn't there it's not on the desktop so i always turn that on so it is there now this might be a bit of a hangover from my windows days but i don't care it's just convenient to know it's there and it takes me to my next little tip which is if you go into finder go into view and turn on show status bar that brings this little thing up down here which basically tells you what's going on in that folder but more importantly for me it tells me how much space I have left on my Mac because the only other ways to find that out is to go into settings, to right click on Macintosh HD and go into get info. That is just much quicker for me. I just open Finder, look at the bottom and there's my space. The other thing I do in Finder is turn on the list view because I think by default it's icons which are just too big and not very well organized. I think list again might be a hangover from my Windows days but I don't care. It's just it feels familiar and it feels much easier to work with. I also add a few folders into the favorites bar on the left hand side. This, this is just for folders that I need to access quite regularly. So for instance, I just grab one, pop it in there, bang. Trackpad, if we go into system settings and trackpad, obviously, I always turn on secondary click, click or tap with two fingers. And that means that when you use two fingers on your trackpad, just a little gentle tap, you get the right click menu, which again is probably a Windows hangover, but I don't care. Once again, it just, it just makes sense. And also tap to click. That isn't usually turned on by default. And it just means that you don't have to click. You can just tap and you know, it works. Right, the apps that I use very quickly, Outlook for email because it's the best, I'm, I'm not making this up, it's the best email client I've ever used on macOS and I've tested most of them. Fantastical for my calendar which doesn't sync with Android which is very annoying but it's the best calendar solution on the Mac. The fact that you can naturally type stuff in, so for instance meeting Patrick Rambles in that place in Vegas at 3pm next week enter. It just does all the clever stuff for you and that thing ends up on your calendar. I use Slack for team communication, Tick Tick for my to-do list, Text Expander which is a fantastic way of very quickly entering long passages of text and stuff that you type regularly with just a few letters. I know there's ways of doing that in macOS but I don't care. Text Expander just works for me. Roboform for password management although I will shout out one password as well because it's nice to have options. And then if it's a production machine like that one over there, Final Cut Pro, Lightroom and Logic Pro. Bang. Adding web apps to the dock is the next thing that I do. And remember, this has to fall under the dock guidelines of keeping it nice and tidy and only having things in there that you access all the time. And for me, that's two web apps. It's Notion. And yes, I know you can get Notion for macOS as a native app, but I just prefer for whatever reason the web version. But it's Notion and BBC Sounds. I use BBC Sounds in this studio all the time to listen to the radio. This is how you add that to the dock. So you go into Safari, into that web page that you want to add to the dock. Click Click the little button there, add to dock. You can then call it something. I mean, I always call it something very, very short just to keep things simple. BBC Sounds, add, lo and behold, there it is. And the really cool thing about this is that when you open it from the dock for the first time, it comes up as an app. It gets rid of all the Safari gubbins and behaves like an app. It's so useful. I think this came in during macOS 15. We'll put down here where this was introduced because if you've got a particularly old Mac, you may not have this option, but it's worth getting a new Mac for it near, nearly, kind of. The menu bar. Top right hand corner, we have all these icons. Some of these are things that I've put in there myself and they come with the apps that I install, but there may be certain things that you want in there and they're not there by default. So for me, for instance, the ability to switch between focus modes is really important. And by default, it's hiding in here. So you have to go into, what, they, what do they call that now? Is it mission control? Whatever that thing is at the top right, you have to go into that and choose it from here. However, if I hold down command and drag 
that into the menu bar, it appears there, which means I've always got very fast access to my focus modes. And you can do that with any of the stuff in here. You can move any of these into the menu bar and there it is. I would just recommend keeping it fairly uncluttered, obviously, because I'm clearly a clean freak. Tip number six on my list is installing Chrome as a secondary browser. Yes, you heard that right. I'm not Chrome first, I'm Safari first. Get involved in the comments, hit me with your thoughts on that, but for me, Safari is better. However, I do occasionally need Chrome to do certain things because Safari. So having it there and having it in the dock actually, even though I should remove it, shouldn't I? Let's get rid of it. But yeah, for me, Safari, Chrome, I know this is going to cause havoc. Tip number seven, I think, is use the downloads folder as a catch-all. And what I mean by that is any folder, any file, anything that you need to use once and then forget about, put it into the downloads folder. What so many people do wrong with this is they just put it onto their desktop. And you, you see this on trains where, or you know, in cafes and things where someone's sitting there with a Mac full of stuff on the desktop. There's just thousands of folders and files and they haven't turned on snap to grid which means they're all on top of each other it's just ah! put all of that stuff into your downloads folder and just clear it out every couple of weeks you'll be so much happier so much more productive and if i walk past you in a cafe i won't feel like that my next tip is to use a clean, simple wallpaper. And I know what this video is making me sound like, but trust me, these cleanliness things, this organization just means that you can get around your Mac quicker, your productivity increases, and trust me, you're happier because working in a mess is horrible. And I think the best wallpapers out there at the moment are the built-in Mac OS drone things they've got because they are beautiful and they're clearly designed to ensure that you can see what's going on on your desktop. I've made that mistake of using a family photo or a photo I've taken while traveling and as lovely as it looks on that screen you can't see anything apart from that photo. I've also just noticed that I use two widgets that I've not talked about yet they're both the same they are they're basically the city times and I work with people in those two time zones so it just means that I know what time it is for them and it's just there straight away. That's the only use case I've found for widgets in Mac OS. If you're a widget user get involved. The last two tips are just for MacBook users, but they're very important. Firstly, get yourself a slipcase. This is by Inatech, it's my personal favorite. We'll link to it down below, but there are thousands of them out there, obviously. It just means that you can take your laptop, put it in there. This is the wrong size for this laptop, I know, but for the purpose of this demonstration, zip it up, stick your cables in there, done, it's safe. The last tip relates to this, and it's to stop worrying about your Mac after a certain period of time. Now, I'm one of those people who worries about his tech incessantly. As soon as I get it, the slightest scratch, nick, smudge, whatever, bothers me to the point where I keep cleaning it and checking it and all that stuff. And then I think after about two months, I just stop that. And those nicks and scratches and things that, that inevitably happen, they, they do happen, I just look at them for a minute and think, oh no, and then just think, it doesn't matter. This always happens with Macs. They just become very personal devices which have the battle scars of being used. So if you're like me and you have that kid glove thing going on, just ease off after a while. It doesn't matter. <sighs> Those are my tips, guys. The only other tip I've got is to not bother with Apple Care because I've never used it. Touch wood, I shouldn't say this. I've never needed it. And I don't know, let, let me know in the comments what you think about that. And, and in fact, I can guarantee there's loads of stuff that you, that you feel that I've missed out on. Things that you do with all your Macs and the little ticks, ticks, little tips and tricks and apps that you use. Get involved. Let's make this comments thread a huge Bible of stuff for, for Mac users. Let's really go for it. I, I'm, I'm fascinated to see what you guys do. Get involved, and if you haven't hit subscribe yet, you know what to do. See you in the next one.